Howdy folks, today I want to talk about the Jizz Ear 41T Flame. These are actually very pretty IEMs, they're extremely high quality in terms of the build, fit and finish. They fit well in my ears and they're quite pretty. And uh, <laughs> I got them, stuck them in my ears and I was immediately like, eh, I don't like them, they're dark. And then everyone was like, you know, Tony Tex uh, really likes these, and he's probably going to break you in half. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, did he co collab on these? Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't know. But um, so I did some listening, and I'm just like, well, you know, they're, they're okay. They're fine, I guess. They're not quite as dark as I first uh, thought when I shoved them in my ears. I did a graph on them, which I don't have up, and I'm not going to pull up. And here's the basic deal. These have 11 decibels of ear gain. And then I went on Tony Tex's, uh, well, sorry, Akiros. I went on his uh, review and checked it out. And he has more like seven to eight decibels of ear gain. And then it's like, well, what the hell? So then I went on the Squig, you know, site. And I looked up the graphs that a bunch of people have done on these and they pretty much break into two categories the seven to eight decibels and then the like 10 to 11 decibels of ear gain well i don't like 10 to 11 decibels of ear gain i can't fit these deep enough in my ears to allow for 10 to 11 decibels of ear gain so what that ends up meaning is that i hear a lot of high mids and like very low treble and the bass is like eh, whatever so uh, these come across as really rather center focused to me. They work pretty decent for a variety of genres, but it's just, you know, I'm pretty sure they have Belsing drivers in them, and for whatever reason, those things just always fall flat for me. They just don't have the mojo of Sonyans, and I'm not hu a huge fan of uh, Nulls either in general, which tend to have a metallic thing going on. So I guess these are either a silent retuning or just screwed up QC. Um, I don't hate them and I don't like them. They're just kind of like eh for me. Um, so there's that. Now, um, I've also got, let me see if I pull these ones out. Yeah, these are the 61T Angel Ears or something like that. These are a bit better. Um, they have more trouble for sure. They have, these actually have seven decibels of ear gain, which is according to other graphs about correct. Uh, fit and finish fine, blah, 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 all that stuff. I don't find them to be spectacular, super, or anything like that. I would take the um, Cadenza 4s 10 out of 10 times over these guys. So, just to go over them, uh, Jizz Ears is not really uh, my favorite from what I have heard so far. Um, what else do we have here? Something. Jumps. Oh. <laughs> well, here's a Super Cunt, <laughs> which uh, has been sent back to me to retune. For more mid bass, uh, dude just really likes mid bass and likes to listen to extremely heavy metal. So you know, fair enough, fair enough. Give him some more mid bass. And the final thing, which um, only one person other than myself owns, these are the El Vedghetto. They started life as variations, and here I can just pop that open. Whoa, check that out. There's a focus, you turd. Um, so. EST, dynamic driver, two balanced armatures, and a hell of a good tuning with dipped out mids. So of course, my whole deal with these is, well, I want more mid bass and I want better mids. So what I did actually is I went in here <clears throat> and removed the crossover from the dynamic driver and then set the dynamic driver. Basically, there's no back damper on the dynamic driver anymore and tuned it just right so that it actually balances out with the uppers. Um, and so part of that mojo is that it, I had to drill a hole through this freaking um, hardened steel shell because this little pinhole here was not doing the trick. It was screwing up my tuning and not letting the dynamic driver really, really bump, like pull as much air as it needs from the back to do what it wanted to do. This, in my opinion, is probably one of the first, if not the first, truly open back dynamic driver. It's a tribred, right? But the dynamic driver puts out as much sound out the butt, probably more than it does out the nozzle. <laughs> Very interesting. So if, 
you play these uh, people around you are going to be like, oh my God, you're making yourself deaf. And it's like, no, actually the sound, like 50% of the sound is coming out the ass. <laughs> But uh, very interesting IEM, and I, um, I had a certain goal for these, and, it, and I made it. It was absolutely fantastic. The, just, the way these come across, the, the low end, is completely different from anything else. It's extremely wide, 3D, open. The bass just is ethereal and, and amazing on them. And, you know, being a tri-bed, EST drivers pull off some of the most amazing details ever. They're just phenomenal absolutely phenomenal so call him El Ghetto, which uh, for my area means like basically like motherfucker or something like that it's kind of slang <laughs> people throw it around a lot but uh very very cool IEMs and uh these were I actually sent them off to a buddy and then he's like you know what you put in he had me tune them for like disgusting grindcore black death metal just the worst things you could ever hear and I did that, and then he's like, well, yeah, but I actually listened to a few other things. So then I sent him back, and I removed a little bit of bass. So that's where I'm at with these. Got to glue them back together, set them off. But hey, fun stuff, man. Nothing like playing with these. And also, uh, I posted some pictures of these, and people were crying and whining and moaning. Oh, my God, you ruined the variations. They're the best IEMs that were ever made in history. And it's like, yeah, no, they're not. <laughs> There's my tip that I lost. Anyway, um, Elvid Ghetto. Freaking awesome IEMs. The mod on these is not cheap. I've been doing it for between 100 and 200, or sorry, 150, 200 dollars. It's just you got to be delicate with these. I don't want to crack the shells. You got to drill through a hardened steel, which takes a carbide bit and oil. I got to get in there, pull the uh, EST transformer out so I can get to the dynamic driver, pull the damper off of that, change uh, the crossover. Blah blah blah. It's a lot of work, but uh, very very cool and some of the most unique IEMs out there, so cool. And I just wanted to talk about this, yeah, 11 decibels, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? Uh, not gonna work for me. Anyway, have a good one. <laughs>